I'm interested in your views on what's happening in Australia. Uh, you wrote recently about Sweden, their left-wing government mm. having mass mm. migration and having all sorts mm. of unintended consequences going from this peaceful mm. paradise to a country now. I think Sweden's uh, the second uh, most bombed <laughs> country yes. that is not at war. They've got bombs going off uh, all over the place. And uh, we've got a left-wing government in now. We've just had uh, more than 500,000 net migrants come in in a year. Uh, it's an inc uh, incredible surge to, to previous years. Uh, what do we need to be mindful of and what lessons are there from, from Sweden, which really had an open border policy, different to what we've seen in Australia? Yes, no, it's amazing, really. I mean, as you say, this is... Uh, uh, in 2015, the Swedes opened their borders. They said uh, it's incredibly important to be open-hearted and generous to the world and so on. But what they did was, as we just heard in the previous segment, they did what a lot of governments have been doing. You, you, you effectively punish people who come to our countries legally. You punish them and you incentivize people who break the rules and come illegally. And that's happening everywhere from, from Sweden to America uh, to Britain and Australia. It's, it's, it's an astonishing mistake. But, but yes, I mean, as Rita says, you know, you, you have this, uh, this crazy situation. Right? Sweden, you know, do you remember the old days? We all used to talk about Sweden. Always a Scandinavian option for everything. Anything in life could be improved by referring to Scandinavia. People would say, oh, well, the Swedish this, the Danish that whether it was a hot drink or a, <laughs> a, a way to feel good or, or a policy. Mm -hmm. It was always about Scandinavia. And then, as you say, Rita, you know, you get this situation where you have uh, now Sweden, the second, second largest number of bombings of any country not officially at war, after, <laughs> only after Mexico. Only after Mexico. And if, you'd have, if, if, if I'd have said to you uh, uh, 10 years ago, you know, what do you think about when you think about Sweden? Like me, you'd have probably said, well, you know, I don't know, hot drinks, overpriced food, but, not, you know, nice people, uh, or rather cold. You wouldn't have said, oh, grenade attacks. Mm. You know, yeah. the traditional Swedish <laughs> grenade attack. Uh, never forget the intrinsic importance of our culture of grenades. And, uh, but that's the case because, because they just didn't care about who they let in. And it meant that they were letting in military-aged males who very often lied about their age. And, you know, none of this... You know, there are legitimate asylum seekers mm. in the world. Those people are completely stripped of their, of their capabilities and their rights. When you allow, well, as I've seen this in Sweden myself, you know, big bearded guys in their 20s who say, oh, I'm a child migrant, you know, allowed <laughs> into a school and so on, and they just lose control of everything. <laughs> but, you know, that's the thing with the migration issue. All of our countries in the developed world are struggling with this. There are millions upon millions of people in the world who want to come to, to sa relatively safe, liberal, democratic countries like this one, like Britain, like America, and like European countries. And the question is, well, are we able to step up to that challenge and actually bring in people at a reasonable rate, or is that too difficult for our politicians?